Good afternoon, everybody. This is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop on our Sunday evening blog. Well, first of all, I hope all of you had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful weather. Gorgeous up here in the North Country. And then Monday, yeah, we got a little bit of rain, but hey, all's well that ends well. All right. Well, what do we have for you this week on the Sunday evening blog? Well, this week we have... Now, let's blow this up so we can even see it. Here we go. We have the Cam Master Stinger 2 Router 3 Year Review. We pulled out of our staircase panel tutorial for just a moment. We'll get into that deeper on our midweek shout out. Uh, we decided to do our 3 Year Review on our Cam Master Stinger 2 Model SR34. We've been talking about that coming up. So, here we are. All right. <laughs> to break it down real quickly, what is CNC? All right, CNC, Computer Numerical Control, is the automation of tools by computers executing pre-programmed sequences of machine-controlled commands. Basically, you have a computer that corresponds and tells a piece of equipment what to do. The machine that we are going to discuss is mine. The Stinger 2, built by Cam Master in Cartersville, Georgia. It is, in fact, three years old, and it was purchased for this shop by me. Okay, I am not associated or affiliated with Cam Master in any way. Uh, and the opinions in this article, this blog, and this video are entirely that of my own. They do not reflect any one person, place, or company. Okay. Well, this is this has basically come down to a just a bunch of compounded questions that I, I decided to address. Okay, these are some of the questions that we were asked. Coincidentally, Steve, of all the equipment on the market today, why did you choose Cam Master? Okay, reasonable question. What separated my machine from the competitors? Why the specific Cam Master model that you chose? Why this specific machine? Okay. Why is my Cam Master set up the way that it is? And would I have gone out and designed my machine any differently, or would I have gone out and gotten a different one? Okay. Why Cam Master? We'll address that first question. Okay, why Cam Master? First and foremost, I believe in buying things that are built in my own country. So, I wanted an American-built machine. Cam Master in Cartersville, Georgia, is in fact an American-based CNC company that builds CNC equipment right there in Georgia itself. Okay? All right. The other thing was a, a decent warranty. Uh, Cam Master, much like everybody else, they offered a one-year warranty on this specific machine. I think it was two years on the Panther or the Cobra, which were much higher, much more industrial-grade pieces of equipment, which were well out of our budget. But we got a one-year warranty on this, and this is what they quoted. Uh, defects in workmanship, materials, and construction. I also needed good support. All right, I needed not only a customer service basis, I needed a tech department, and I also needed to be able to speak with somebody common who works on the floor. Anybody sitting behind an office desk who doesn't know about the equipment, in my opinion, can't tell me about it. You can tell me the features and this and that and the other, but I need to talk with somebody who physically works there that can walk me through a troubleshoot, that kind of support. And then the other kind of support that I wanted was I wanted a good forum. Well, Cam Master has the Cam Heads. I belong to many others, but Cam Heads is a really nice forum, a lot of really nice guys in it. And, matter of fact, some of the guys that are in the forum don't even own Cam Masters. They own other pieces of equipment, but a lot of knowledge, a lot of great guys. Okay, replacement parts and upgrades. That was something else Cam Master offered. Down the road, I want to upgrade something. How do I do it? Well, it's not as though we're going to pick this machine up, put it in the mail, and send it back. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Well, Cam Master has the ability to box anything up, ship it to me. Minimal turnaround time because, coincidentally, all the parts for this equipment, they're made in-house right there. They don't subcontract out uh, the materials uh, to build the equipment because they fabricate all the parts right there in their uh, Georgia plant, okay? The other thing that I wanted was, I call it turnkey. If I go to a car dealership and I buy a new car, I expect to put the key in the ignition, turn it over and drive away with it. These machines are no different in my opinion. I want to take my machine out of the crate. I want to get it leveled. I want to plug things in. Turn everything on and I want to start milling. I don't want to have to put this in or install that or I've got to go to this website and upgrade. No, 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 no. I want plug and play. And that I got out of my Cam Master, my Stinger, uh, Stinger 2. Cam Master versus the competition. Okay, what attracted me to Cam Master the most were all the options. And we're going to get into some of those options here in a minute. All the different models, sizes, designs is what made Cam Master, uh, in my opinion, stand out in this big CNC world of ours. And the, and the biggest primary reason I went with Cam Master, beyond the fact that it was American made and all that, was I had absolute control over my purchase. Nobody tried to sway me into something I didn't want. Nobody tried to push that product on me. Uh, my sales rep was very knowledgeable. He was very forthcoming. Steve, hey, coincidentally, and let me tell you about this. Make up your own mind, but let me tell you about it. Uh, that's what I like. I don't like somebody trying to be your buddy, push something off on you so that they can make a better commission. No, that's not a salesman. All right. Now, somebody else had asked me, Steve, is there a specific reason why you chose this model <laughs> from Cam Master? Yes, there is. Mm. Here's why. Now, I personally needed the most versatile machine that I could, I could fit in this shop. Now, granted, yeah, I could probably put an 8-foot machine in here. That's about all I'm going to fit. Benches, space, storage, it's all going to be gone. We are the little, little wood shop. So this is why we went with the machine that we went with. <coughs> square footage was limited. Not only was my square footage limited, but the power coming up here was limited as well. I have a total of 60 amps in this shop. Now, for the most part, years ago, chances are my grandmother's house didn't even have that in it. But... By today's machine requirements, 60 amps is not a lot of juice. Yes, you could do an electrical upgrade, but that would have put me over budget, as it probably would a lot of you. So that was another deciding factor that I had on this specific piece of equipment. Okay, why was it set up, Steve, the way you set it up? Okay, here's, here's why. First of all, let me just blow my, my screen up here a little more. First of all, I decided a while back I wasn't doing any metal. No metal work, no welding, no milling, no drilling, no metal work, nothing. Uh, I had done that for years. I was kind of burnt out on it. I like working with wood. Well, because you're not going to be doing any metal, there's no reason for any solvents or anything that could drip on the spoiler board. So what helped me there was the fact that I did not need a factory installed spoiler board that would take care of coolants and, and things of that nature. Uh, I believe that they call it a philonic board, which is basically HDPE, it's a high density polyethylene, like a 55 gallon drum. I was able to go with an HDF or a high density fiber board, and then I put MDF, which I'm sitting on, over the top of the factory spoiler board. The cost savings between HDF and an HDPE or Philonic plastic board is well over a thousand dollars I saved. Okay, so that's back to me though because I've, I've decided not to do any metal. The one thing I did like about my sales rep, now I started calling probably around March or April 
Like I said, it was middle of May of 2014. Uh, we signed a purchase and sales agreement. Uh, but the gentleman did mention that if I could hold out a few more weeks, uh, the Memorial Day package that they had was a combined upgrade package for this specific machine. <coughs> and I might be able to do everything from right here. All right. A fast tool change is basically, it's a touch plate mounted on the side of the machine. Now this is one of the four upgrades that came in my package. I've personally never used it. I don't swap out a lot of bits up here, but nonetheless, it is worth mentioning. You can basically, in the morning when you initialize and calibrate your machine and get yourself ready to start your day's run, uh, whether you start milling off the top of your spoiler board or the top of your material, you can go in and you can configure your fast tool change uh, touch plate so that every time you do a bit change it will come back, touch your plate, you don't have to go back and touch your top, which I don't mind doing. So, like I said, I don't really use it. I'm guessing somebody who's doing a lot of uh, bit changes, that would probably be handy. Okay, but it came with my package. Counterbalance. Uh, I had somebody tell me that they really weren't interested in this. This is one of two items in my package I will highly recommend. This is a pneumatic counterbalance. It runs off of a very, very small pancake air compressor, which is under my... Uh, under my behind as we speak. <laughs> Don't think for a minute that this machine requires loads of air. Mine doesn't. I plug in a pancake stapler to power this. What it basically does is it takes all the weight off of the, uh, the z-axis and it puts less strain on the z-axis drive motor which raises and lowers the router up and down constantly throughout the milling uh, procedure. The other thing that I like is with the, uh, with the pneumatic lift, it's going to save the longevity on your motor. These NEMA drive motors, there are four total, uh, which that is the next upgraded thing. My machine came stock with 650 uh, torque ounce uh, NEMA drive motors. The upgrade includes a 900 torque ounce drive motor. So this is not going to be overheating or... or straining because there's a lift assist to take the bulk of the weight off of the router or the big heavy industrial spindles. I would certainly recommend one of these, okay? Uh, like I said, the motors, there's four of them. Z-axis, X-axis, one under uh, one under the gantry on each side to run the Y-axis, okay? What I will do down the road, uh, and we'll get into that, uh, we'll get into that in just a second, and last and least, my upgrade also came with a laser crosshair. It's pretty much just what it sounds like. This laser was mounted at the factory. It shoots this bright red crosshair onto the table. So wherever my material is, I set that laser crosshair, which is calibrated coincidentally to the center of the router spindle. And then on my WinCNC controller, that's in the computer itself, you have the option to zero the router route to the laser crosshair with laser X0, Y0. <laughs> Pneumatic lift assist and the laser, in, in my opinion, these are probably two of the most important things you can have on your, your piece of equipment. Okay? Alrighty. Now, we will discuss some of the other things and some of the other options. I will just read them off real quick to you. They have a recoil, uh, recoiling indexing lathe, your fourth axis, your counterbalance, your fast tool change, your laser crosshair. We had discussed the Philonic top real quick. I told you I went with a high density fiber board versus uh, a big high density polyethylene. I'm not, I'm not doing any metal. They do offer a vacuum table for all the stingers. Okay, hold down table. Digitizing touch probe. Okay, and we also have spindle upgrade options. You can, you can purchase different size spindles ranging from one to three or four kilowatts. You can also get a gantry lift for this machine or 
well, I'm sorry, all stingers, which will take you from five inches of clearance uh, to seven and three quarters in the event you're going to be drilling anything really, uh, milling out anything really with a deep pocket. The X3 I looked at, nice, basically it's a primary spindle or router with a, with a couple routers on each side. I couldn't justify the money for it though. A maintenance kit, which we'll touch base on that real quick. I cannot recommend your maintenance kit enough. It's your grease gun and it's all the special fittings that you would need with this particular machine uh, to keep it greased and lubricated and functioning properly. And lastly, a remote handheld keypad. <coughs> this is one that I got from my good buddy Mr. Geron out at US Router Tools, why, where I go and I buy all my mills and end mills and spoiler board bits and stuff like that. Joey carries, this one's hard line. We'll, We'll be looking at a wireless one down the road, but this is nice. This is kind of a bell and whistle. It's not mandatory, but uh, it is nice to have. I would recommend it. All right. And I can say this is another reason that I like Cam Master very much. They have a frequently asked question page. I'm going to highlight that really, really quick. Cam Master gives, uh, before you buy a CNC router, okay, what is the difference between a spindle and a router? What's the difference between stepper motors and servos? Alrighty. What's better, rack or pinion or ball screws? Or a ball screw, I'm sorry. What size machine is best for me? How fast will my machine go? How fast can it cut parts? Okay. Do I need to learn a programming language? What software do I need? All right. I'm not going to go in and answer these, but these are these are some very good questions for you to start. What horsepower spindle do I need? How do I hold down my material? Do I need a vacuum hold down system? Which machine is right for me? Stinger, Panther, Cobra, oh my. There is so much overwhelming information out there today <laughs> that yes, there are some points where I, I think you will, uh, you will possibly lose your mind. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's go back to our blog and we'll finish this up. Okay, finally, finally the last question that I was asked was Steve, Steve, if you had to do it all over again, what would you have done differently? Okay. Upgrades and changes. I am completely content with the upgrade package that I got. <coughs> I got a Stinger 2 Premium Plus upgrade package, whatever it was. It came with the four upgrades, fast tool change, gantry assist, oversized motors, laser crosshair. All right. I would not have changed the size of this machine for a bigger piece of equipment. Wouldn't have done it. This machine fits perfectly in here. I have little workstations, but again, this is my situation, not yours. I know that this machine is capable of doing light production work, even with a, uh, even with a router. Now having the motor upgrade uh, down the road, there's nothing holding me back from doing a spindle, which I, I originally wanted a spindle. I didn't want the router. Uh, the only one thing I will say that's good about the router over the spindle is if in the event this thing breaks, I can run to a home improvement center. I can buy another Milwaukee plunge router. I can swap it out and I can probably be running that day or by the next day at the latest. With a spindle, if your spindle goes, you're going to have some downtime. These are just little things to keep in mind, though, okay? Because you're going to have to order the spindle, or you're going to have to take it off the machine, have it rebuilt at the factory, have it sent back, you've got to reinstall it. Something to keep in mind, all right? I would have liked the fourth axis. I would have liked the idea of the uh, retractable lathe up here. I think it would have given me another, uh, another niche income stream. You never know when uh, you might have a call out for the use of it. However though, before I would have gone out and purchased said uh, fourth axis, I would have definitely gotten a vacuum hold down. 
<laughs> I would have gotten a vacuum table or I know that they make a cyclone vacuum system. I would have done something for hold down other than clamps or screwing to my, my spoiler board. That is about it. Uh, that's my three year review. Now the one thing I can say, <coughs> Steve, how about downtime? Okay, one, I've never had downtime due to my equipment. Nothing on it is ever broken. The only thing that's ever happened all my brushes inside my router have worn out. They're much like brake pads in a car. Eventually, they have to be replaced or your router does not work. That's it. I do my weekly maintenance or I do some type of bi-weekly scheduled maintenance. If the machine's not running, it doesn't need to be maintained. But when it is, we do the proper maintenance. We keep it clean. We keep it dry. My shop is also heated. All right. Again, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what you're looking to do. You're going to need to narrow all that down. You know, do you want to do signs? Do you want to make kitchens? Do you want to build furniture? Do you want to build plaques? Are you looking to fabricate specialty items? It's going to come down to what you want to do. I can't, I can't open up the golden book of CNC and tell you that that's the exact machine you need. However, I can give you my experiences with the equipment that I own. I am very pleased. Okay, I'm not uh, displeased in my purchase. Yes, there were some other, other add-ons I would have liked to have had. Either we didn't have the power up here to run them, or we weren't budgeted for them in the first place. Okay, so keep all of this in mind when you're doing your shopping. One thing that I would, uh, I would recommend uh, print out. Do a printout of any machine you're looking at. All the options, all the features. Get a highlighter. Highlight every machine you look at. Highlight all the options that they have. Especially the ones that are identical. Use a different colored highlighter and highlight maybe one the Cam Master has that the competition doesn't or vice versa. You're looking at a very large out-of-pocket investment. For yourself, okay? However, if it's something you're looking at career related or you're, you're adding a, a specialty niche market into your own shop that you already have, you're going to want to do your research. The equipment is not cheap. I don't believe any two machines are built the same. Research, research, research. Study, 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 okay? I can't give you more than that. I will say positive things about this machine, and I'm sure if we do a four or five year review on this machine, I'll be telling you the same thing again, okay? Well, for now, all of you, have a wonderful week. Stay tuned for our, uh, our Wednesday uh, midweek shout out. Until then, everybody, thank you for following and subscribing to us. Thank you for all your support, ladies and gentlemen. I think I just need another vacation from my vacation, but uh, we got more to come. Please stay tuned, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right, everyone, take care. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.